to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And today is Tuesday, it is state primary day here in New Hampshire, which means you should all be making sure that you get out and vote today, um, whether you're a registered Republican and voting in the Republican primary, registered Democrat voting in the Democrat party, or an undeclared voter who can choose which ballot um, they want to vote in in either primary. Um, if you want to maintain that undeclared um, Status. status you have to make sure you switch back at the polling place because it's and it's it's genuinely it's super easy you just go in if you're and and the majority of voters in new hampshire are independents are undeclared they're not independent though they're undeclared there's no there's nothing independent about them they're either republic most so, almost all of the undeclared voters can easily be identified as republicans or democrats they're just not members of the party there's very few people in the middle in new hampshire oh interesting it's just I, uh, that they're undeclared Okay. So they don't uh, they don't file as a voter in a specific party, but their voting records are very specific. Hmm. It's very weird. So it, in many states, you are an independent voter. There's the independent party, or you know, which is supposed to be more independent. And people use the terms intermingling. It's just a thing. We're weird. So uh, for folks who are curious or who would like to go out and vote, maybe support the Liberty candidates, you know, to. I don't know, stop the marching authoritarian totalitarian states we seem to be building here. Uh, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, had a whole skunk situation this morning. I hope I don't smell too bad. <laughs> don't smell it. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, 20 homeless people have moved into my backyard. So, I mean, I don't know what's up, Manchester, but I feel like we could do better. So if you think you can... Uh, you want to support candidates who think they can do better instead of these same people yak, yak, yakking and just making all the things worse and worse and worse. I highly recommend the Liberty Ballot. So the Liberty Ballot, libertyballot.com, you can go on there and it will sort of recommend who you need to be voting for. Important things that you need to know about the Liberty Ballot. They don't pick people who don't have a primary. Right. So thank you to the hundred people who contacted me early, early this <laughs> to morning. To say, hey, how come you're not on the They're Liberty like, Bell? why aren't you endorsed? Right. Um, I'm not endorsed by any of the organizations because I didn't fill out this stack of paperwork I that know. I got. Dan and I fill out some of them. It's I um, forgot that my official mailing address is not my house address and i was like i haven't been to the the box in a while and i got there and i was like well yeah whoa. it's a lot and for anybody who's never run for office as much as everybody thinks it's as easy as putting your name it, you could i guess just put it but you would not believe the amount of surveys and every year it gets worse and worse and, and worse and not just and, and, and they're and, not all very user friendly some of them want you to fill it out on paper and then scan it and email it to them which is fine but not everybody's got a scanner i happen to have one at work but it's like that would be a pain for me then there's other ones that have ridiculous deadlines the filing periods in the middle to like the second and third week of june and the deadline for Granite State Taxpayer Survey is like July 15th or I know, something. I know, I know. I'm and not even, I don't have a primary. My race doesn't actually start till tomorrow. And exactly, although I still have 30 signs out already. Um, so just to wrap up with the Liberty Ballot idea. So, so basically this is um, done by, you know, nonpartisan people who just actually are very Liberty Forward. And so if you go to the ballot, libertyballot.com, you'll see some things are filled in and some aren't. So what you you might find, like for governor, there's no one who's not, recommended. Right. Um, Same with the U.S. Senate. So with, uh, with uh, United States Senator, they supported three candidates. So there's Kevin Smith, uh, General Balduck, and Bruce Fenton. Bruce is going to be my guy. Why not at least give... Uh, you know, him him a shot. Uh, Tim Baxter, obviously, mm, for Congress. Right. He's, Same here. you know, um, and then you can, you know, you can go see for the other for the other ones. But, you know, if you look here and you look in for my district, yeah. it, you know, no one's filled in. And so everyone was like, oh, yeah. what, did, what did you do? And who did you make I, I was just talking to somebody <laughs> this morning about that because Liberty Battle does it that way. And I forget who. There's another organization that I think is the NRA. So the NRA won't put out their general election endorsements yet so right now if somebody looks in my ward they're like well why aren't you endorsed by the nra and i'm like well that because i don't actually have right. a primary so it right. can be confusing for people who aren't in the know so it is confusing which is why i'm letting everyone know especially for folks who are watching on facebook who will get out and vote today uh in the primary 
Uh, yeah, so... So here, so m my friend Marion's here from Arkansas visiting, and Marion um, lived in New Hampshire in the past and will hopefully be living back in New Hampshire soon. Um, but she's worked on political campaigns and everything, and she came up to say, you know, I'm going to hang out for the, the primary election. Um, so we got up this morning and did. Uh, we went out and we helped, uh, stood with Kristen Noble in Bedford and held signs for her and Tim Baxter. Um, after the show's done taping, uh, we're going to head out to New Boston because they have a weird situation out there. They have four pro-liberty incumbent reps running for three seats because of redistricting. Oh, interesting. So one of them's going to lose... Just because of redistricting. We're going to lose one. It, it, so that was not a good redistricting thing. But anyways. Well, you know. And, um, and, so and then we're going to go up in Ward 1, which is Michael Yakubovich. Yep. Um, for state Senate. And we'll be able to help Timmy Baxter there, too. So there's an interesting race. So, it, so, so with that race, right, which used to be my Senate district, just so folks know, if you live in Hooksett or Goffstown, you must, must, must get out today and hopefully go support Mike. Michael, um, I can't say his last name. I try every time. I'm gonna have to like do. Uh, somebody a says it differently. I think there a bunch of people say it differently. I say but Michael I say Michael Yak Y now. Yakubovich. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, just for no other reason than the heinous, mm. ridiculous campaign that was run there by very unethical standards, which you know no one should be proud of. So. Uh, you know, people show their colors, mm. which I find really fascinating. Well, I think really it's unfortunate. I think it's really, I think, I think we were talking, I was out, um, like I said, I was standing at Bedford, so I was talking with um, some more people in the know, right? So we're having a political conversation, and I was asking somebody's opinion, which I wouldn't mind talking about a little bit, about who they thought was going to win, win the, the federal races. Um, but we got talking, of, and that's where I, the negative campaigning. So it became a ch uh, bit of a joke in my house to go to the mailbox every day to find out what Matt Mowers thought of Caroline Levitt and what Caroline Levitt thought of Matt Mowers. I mean, they really were a lot. Some of it was directly from their campaign. Some was from PACs, but it was like an everyday thing. And it was some, it was getting to the point of absurdity. And then I think in the last week, you've seen the same thing with um, Chuck Morris and Don Bolduck entities pushing them against each other. So, and I think it's unfortunate, and I see a lot of, there's a lot of um, passion in the governor's race because of lockdowns and things like that, um, and, but I, I looked, the people I was talking with who are, you know, on my, our, our flavor of Republican are, agreed that I think sometimes we really do shoot ourselves in our, and we, we cut off our nose to spite our face because Today or yesterday is not the day to spend your day bad mouthing your opponent because tomorrow they're your team. Somebody's going to win, and that person is the Republican team. And we need to beat the Democrats more importantly, than beat each other. So we were talking about the federal races, and um, I do believe that the CD1 race is probably weaned down to um, Caroline Levitt and Matt Mowers. I think Tim Baxter is a, a, maybe probably running third in that. Um, I'll come back to that. So that's what I think. But because there's that negative, there's that negative tension between Mowers and Caroline. And then in the U.S. Senate race, you've got the same thing. Uh, the person I asked, I said, who do you think will win? And they said, I think it's going to be Bullduck. But then there's been so much money between Bullduck hitting Morse and Morse hitting Bullduck that they surprisingly which is good because I'd like this because this is who I'm voting for, um, think Vikram's going to pull it out, could pull it out. Oh, Vikram, because the two front runners are beating each up too much that those undeclared more middle-of-the-road voters don't... People get tired of it. Can, can I ask, though, like, with whom does it resonate when people are like, look at this dirt bag. This guy's a less dirt bag well, than it's that just, guy. It's, 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 it's like just shock value. Why it's do just we shock want value. to have, like, what, what is that system? I, I agree. I don't, that's not what I want. That's not how I d I mean, determine. is there a way to reform primaries to not make it no, like that? To no, make it more issue-based? It's humans. Or... It's people. Yeah, I'm just saying. Is so it gross. gets it gets that that desire to win sometimes, and like part of the reason why I chose Vikram one, I found him to be a very um, intelligent man. I, I really liked him when I met him in person. I he did very very well in the debates. His poll numbers have gone up significantly since the debate. Um, but 
One of the things I did like about him is he said, I'm not going to beat up the other candidate. I'm just going to run on me. I'm not going to go after the other candidates. That's not who I am. That's not how I do things. And I thought, I think in today's world, we need more of that. We need more of people who say, I don't need to hit you with a hammer to win. I could just say I'm better or you're, be you know, like, so it'll be very interesting um, to see in the Senate race in particular, I think how well if Vikram's number comes up and it'll be interesting to see the breakdown. I mean, I looked at that race and I'm quite honestly, if you had asked me six months ago, I really thought that Kevin Smith would do far better than he, than he appears to be doing. So like, you don't know, you can't always tell. Sometimes people have really good game plans and then for some reason they just all fall apart. Um, so if I had to, bet a beer I, I couldn't I don't even think I could bet a I beer mean, on this US Senate race because literally I don't know who's gonna I win mean, that. and it's a crowded race there are two well, there's four, all sorts six eight ten eleven left, right. people on this right. ballot right so and, and, and then, I'm like and, I don't even know four of these right names. so I'm looking at like Vikram and I don't know if anybody would even know his name because maybe they think his name's Ed LaPlante who's Ed LaPlante Jr. He's running right. for the US Senate you know so um, so there's that um my gut in the governor's race whether people like it or not is um Chris Sununu will win the primary I never thought there was a doubt that Chris Sununu is going to win the primary. Um, I, I will uh, be casting my vote as a protest vote, not. I'm actually for Chris. I don't think the first time I'm I'm in a governor's race in a big race. I don't think I'm voting for any of them. I like I, that. Uh, I, because I, I, I don't be voting for Thad Riley. I think. I think he's um, got I, my concern. You know, he's got he's got a pretty good game. Uh, you know, I agree with you. I think Chris is going to make it. I think yeah. it's pretty ludicrous that. Uh, you know, the last two weeks has kind of been super frustrating because I feel like people, you know, we've always, always worked as the Liberty Caucus together with the mm. Republicans to give them things that they uh, would not be able to do. Well, I wouldn't if, say give the Republicans because we are the Republicans. Well, except when they start supporting PACs to take out incumbent well, elected I, Republicans. Okay. So and I then okay. in the front of the newspaper have the goal to say primary day. Sununu criticizes Dems for meddling in GOP races. So, well, maybe you shouldn't meddle in GOP races. So either. I tried to do some information. And I did, literally didn't have time. So from what I, I'm trying to. I haven't had a chance to go in back and look at when Granite Pack was formed. I did see that Granite Pack's filing did say their purpose was to elect Governor Sununu. So there's that. But I don't know. People always say, well, it was a Sununu started. Well, I don't really know that. I have to look more at the filings. If there's a pack that is pro Sununu or pro Thad or pro whoever, and they act it doesn't mean that the candidate they're set up to benefit acts. So I do not know, everybody, the backlash, I did not like that they mailed against Republicans in primaries because first of all, their PAC did not say that that was their purpose. So I don't think that's appropriate. If you want to run against, if if, if PAC wants to form to say, we're going to oppose anybody who doesn't support Chris Sununu, you can do that. If a PAC wants to form to say, we're going to oppose any candidates who were involved in, um, you know, the rebuild New Hampshire, like there's all sorts of things, but that PAC says their their goal is to elect governor, re-elect Governor Sununu. Why they chose then to mail against six or seven Republicans in primary district doesn't seem, bothers me. I so also how, just how don't know. How does that work? Is that a violation of campaign election It's law? state law and there's probably no Oh, there's legs. of course. So here's one of the things for folks following along. I started this new series. Uh, I'm just doing these little post-its. Uh, not every day, but sort of whenever it strikes me and it's, it's, uh, it's called my life mm -hmm. and it's just like a line with a balancing thing and two things you have to balance and uh lawfare and lawfare is today's right so lawfare f-a-i-r as in life should be fair or life yeah. is not fair or whatever and then lawfare f-a-r-e as in warfare right yeah. so i actually recently heard that word for the first time lawfare and it really resonated with me and so um I just think we're in this lawfare stage, right? And and so the irony of the way laws are written is anything that applies to government officials 
there are no penalties. Well, now go right. figure that. So, so whenever we as ordinary citizens in the world do things wrong, or you know, I don't know, maybe you make a mistake on your taxes, or maybe you, uh, you know, filled in this grant form wrong or something, there are penalties. But here's a little magic that you may not know about the way the government works. Anything that they're supposed to be held accountable for, election laws, campaign finance, all that stuff, there are no penalties. They'll be like, you should file all these things by this date, but oh, if you don't, whoops. Now, assuming we get elected, that's probably really nice because then you're like, eh, I can't get in trouble for doing these things. But you do see that that is not how it should work. Well, and I'm not sure what the what the law says about if a PAC does something that it's not. I just get frustrated because I think everybody is just overreactionary lately. So a PAC did something against these people, so then everybody was pissed at these people, and then that person's pissed at those people, and everybody's backlashing, and all I'm thinking is, can we just get through the primary and get our freaking team in order and get behind the team, which we struggle to do also, because I don't really care which one of those Republicans in that governor's race wins. It cannot be Tom Sherman, the Democrat. Oh, that guy is So, cute. you know, Every when you're can't it can't be technical term, so you know that I I think people underestimate and it's not always um, people underestimate the value of you have to be able to accept when your candidate loses in the primary and move on and focus on what is best for the general election. Um, I'm glad that I don't have a primary. Dan and I do not have a primary. You can still go out and vote for us, but it doesn't really matter. Um, the only primaries on the Republican ticket in, the, in Manchester for state races would be Michael Yakubovich up in Ward 1. So Ward 1 has an active state Senate primary. Um, there is a primary in the district that, I don't know what the numbers are because they keep changing them. The district that... Um, Ross Terrio and George Lambert, I think, have a primary. Oh, so that okay. would be Litchfield and seven, maybe? eight, nine, yeah, seven, there. six. I don't know that group. <laughs> Five, but I'm four, saying three, so. Two, you've got uh, <laughs> there is no um, there is no state senate primary on the west side of Manchester or in three, four, or whatever race wards that is. Now it's all confusing. And then, um, but there are floaterial races. So some of the floaterial districts in Manchester so here's do have. So important one for, um, this is also in floaterial. This is for state rep in the float. This is for Ward 11. So that's my ward um, on the west side. You should go for Marav and Sylvain Yakov. They're in there. And Jamie Brazil is yep, the other person the who is side. recommended. So that's on the west side. And that's for the float. And that's a pretty big It confuses me. Right. And it's not. <laughs> I don't know. It, I can't even keep up with it because it's like wards 10, 11, 12, and I think one. I think. Don't quote me on that. Because they keep they changed it and it's all so weird and they changed the numbers and nobody can keep up and it split the del we we elect delegates to the state convention it used to be just one one thing on each ward oh, now there there's two things you on asked about right? yeah what is that someone well, someone messaged me early does. this morning yeah. and they were like oh I see there are no delegates in yeah. this area can you literal quote mobilize your people yeah, and no. get, and write us in and i was like look i don't I know did. who thinks i have the magic fairies and that you know we could just make things happen on, well, I, on like the turn of a dime we, yes let me organize a write-in campaign we have, for you on eight o'clock on the day of. we had recruited a bunch of people for delegate slots and liberty bell was going to put them on there and just didn't just get around didn't to it. So we had because probably of course all of these things are volunteer yeah. driven. Uh, so good news and let's pivot because I'm just gonna get even more stabby. I don't know, maybe like skunk smell makes me know. crazy or something. Know. But anyway, um, we had a wonderful, wonderful block party mm, on I read about this. Saturday. Uh, it was Rimen Heights, which is a org that's been meeting for many years. Yeah, good ten years now. Yeah, they. Um, you know, the, the, there are lots of neighborhood people involved. We Heart West had a table. Yep. We tabled. There was uh, balloon animals. There was a really, really nice write-up in Manchester Inkling where you can go look. You know, I was looking around and I was like, yeah, about a third of this is actually being done and managed and helped along by 
the evil free staters. So, you know, whenever you read those nasty, nasty things, because I gotta say, I read something today where I was just like, wow, that's a lot of words strung together, but it literally doesn't make sense. And I think it was a letter to the editor in the Laconia Sun or somewhere. And it was like about bike week and in the middle, it just yelled about free staters and it, like it made no sense. So if you're watching this and you hear all the nasty stuff, please take all yeah. of it with a pinch of salt because uh, honestly, most of us are out there trying to make the community better. So, so the block party was really nice. It was super hot. Yeah, there was a dunk Saturday. tank. Um, and then actually on Sunday, we had the We Heart West, um, just the management team and their spouses, and we got together and we had a little picnic at uh, the community garden on Parkside, uh, both to actually use the garden, of course, but then uh, the community garden itself yeah. was getting sprayed, so we wanted to like pick all the tomatoes yeah. and stuff. And it was just really nice being down there and seeing how bountiful, I guess, yeah. Uh, it was in terms of, you know, the, seeing the plants yeah. grow, the kids were playing there, all of that. But then I got a message, a text this morning from, from uh, one of the, the women who lives down right next to the park, actually. And she was like, uh, can you help me? Because I've seen, the, the, like, there's literally a trail of homeless people with trolleys and backpacks going up into the, the, the woods, the back, woods there. back there. And, uh, and she said that they broke into her yard to use her hose to fill their water bottles and what can she do? So I did tell her to, you know, lodge a complaint with the city yeah. to use the app and to drop that in uh, for them. When we did that, we did have a response. It was like a week later, but an officer did show up. And, uh, but it's problematic because, I mean, these people are camping so, on school ground. So, like, if you have kids at yeah. Gosler or Parkside, right. there's failed homeless people in here living on the school grounds. So, it's not so. Okay. This is my sad takeaway from this weekend. We went camping in Lebanon, Maine, so right across the river from, say, like Rochester. And my impression of Rochester for, for a long time was that it was a very gross city and it had a very bad drug problem and it was just a sketchy place. I was always like, I couldn't live in Rochester, right? Was, eh. So we pack up the camper and Dan and me and Marion and the dog and we're driving. We went up, I don't know what street goes north. It wasn't Elm Street, so the one past Chestnut. We're going north on that street and we're like, oh, look at that whole pile of homeless people. And oh, and look at all the people standing in line at the food bank who are probably the same people who come day in, day out. And all it just was everywhere. Every park we went by had all these people just like there. Um, the park across from the library and so on. And we drove and we go take the back roads and we have a very nice trip and we get to Rochester. So in my brain, I'm thinking, what does Let's it look like there? there? <laughs> there was not one homeless person in any park and every wow. park that we went by looked clean. And I thought, so wait, the city that I always thought of as gross was much better looking than Manchester. And it made me really sad because I don't know how we fix it. I do. I know I, I have opinions. I have, there's all sorts of things. If I get elected, I would um, definitely work on the bail reform bills because I think that plays into it. But I really think we have to, um, I do think I saw a post yesterday and it was a quote from um, Justice, Justice Scalia, I believe. And it said, you know, when we give, when we give everything to people, we lose um, recipients that are appreciative and donors that are caring. Mm -hmm. Because when the government steps in and takes that place and just gives it away for free with no repercussions, the people who get it don't seem to appreciate it as much, and the people who used to care more don't. Well, I think that that is a really important factor, right? I think we've talked about this on the show before, is a natural part of healthy charity is that loop. It is both the, the person who is being generous mm. and the person who is receiving it. it. Is appreciative. And, and that person is supposed to feel and share and express gratitude. And this that's why this person's being generous. Like, no one's just good, right? Like, there's got to be an energy cycle or a reason, right? Like, in these people who say it's just 
for whatever it's that's not real the way it works is you want to do something good so that someone can say thank you so that that's a normal energy cycle and you're right the state has totally destroyed that what else can we do in manchester we have to stop just providing services well, that's what I'm so the more you you're like hey let me give you more free stuff they're literally that guy who's good stabbed that guy was from missouri or mississippi, mississippi. or wherever how does like they're coming for, up here for services well, and if you can, I, I don't understand how a homeless person in mississippi can get to new if you're homeless if you can't even put a roof over your head how are you traveling across parts and, of the and maybe they've been here a while whatever but no, you know they so said he was here like literally since the early summer. So so the word gets out, right? And then people are like, you know where there are good programs right now? Manchester, New Hampshire. And then people flock. We know because that is something that happened in Portland or in Seattle and all these things. So basically what's happened in the city is the homeless director quit. She quit. She was making $97,000 a year. So we paid out hundred and eighty thousand dollars for the year and a half that mm -hmm. she worked um that was the wrong math let's say for the two years she worked let's say hundred um for which we had like no like no benefit what what was the benefit so anyway we're running out of time uh, so it's tuesday <laughs> primary state primary day please do if you're watching this on facebook please do get out there and vote today um if you don't know where if you live in manchester and you don't know where your polling places you can easily just type Google, um, either go to manchesternh.gov and look there, or just Google Manchester NH polling places, and trust me, there's links to it all the time. Um, polls are open until 7 p.m. tonight. Um, they always open 6 in the morning, 7 p.m. So we should have results probably statewide races by, I'd say, 8.30 or 9. And if you live in Ward 11 and you would like a yard sign, please contact me at Carla at CarlaGarrick.com. I'd be happy to come drop one off. Uh, race is kicking off for real starting tomorrow. So uh, until then and until next week, everyone take care back home. Have a good one. Bye.